thank you for joining me, Felipe Esparza. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Of course. Now, you have a show coming up. Yes, I have a show um, December 31st at the Paramount Theater in Denver, Colorado at 8 o'clock. All right. And I've got to ask, because it's called the Bad Decisions Tour. Why did you name it the Bad Decisions Tour? Because um, Bad Ombre was already taken. <laughs> that was taken. No, um, we, we, we thought about a lot of ideas that my wife said that um, Bad Decisions sounds better. People recognize it. Yeah. Have you made any bad decisions lately? My whole life. Now, you have been open about that. You have been open about, you know, growing up and, you know, making bad decisions. And can you tell us a little bit about that? Well, I just put up my sleeve and I could just tell by my scars on my hand, my mm -hmm. bad decisions right here. Yeah. Um, I got this hat. I got this when I was like 20 years old. Mm -hmm. I think I got drunk on some Thunderbird and Night Train because that's the cheap stuff. Yes. And... um. My friend and I, we got we started running around, punching people's house windows Did and breaking you, them. So you were drunk and punching out windows. Yeah, in the housing projects. And not, not like in the residential area, but I guess the housing project is a residential area. Uh huh. So we were running around like just breaking people's windows with our hand. Did you get caught? I got cut. You got you definitely got cut, but no one you didn't get in trouble for that. No, I didn't get in trouble because I went. Once I got cut, I started, I walked to the hospital, like a mile, you bleeding. Walked a mile. And what did you say happened? Did you tell them the truth? I told them I was a, kn a knife fight. A knife fight? Yeah. Did they believe you? Yeah. They did? And so did you learn your lesson after that? No. No. I didn't punch windows anymore. Okay, so you stopped punching windows, but you were still getting in trouble. Yeah. What made you stop getting into trouble? Oh, um, I got into a lot of trouble and... Um, when I, when I turned 21, yeah, I got into a fight with a guy who just came out of prison, and he was like an old man. He was like 30 years old. Uh huh. <laughs> yeah, we're all old. past that. We're like 30. I thought, I thought 30 it was old. was old back in the day. I thought it was old back then. I was like, damn, bro, you're like a grown man. <laughs> you should be with your family. You should be taking your kids to ballet. What was the fight about? Oh, uh, because they used to call me Batman. Batman, why? Because I used to wear those Batman underwears all the time. Because I, I, I couldn't get a real Batman shirt. Uh -huh. So I wore the Batman underwear shirt like forever. <laughs> to I turned turn into a fat man. <laughs> so you're like, like the, the wing, the, the bat wing looked like a wing, you know, when I first got it. Yes. Since I got fatter and I started looking like a stork. <laughs> so I went into, uh, right after I got into a fight with that guy. Uh -huh. He went. To, he went to the hospital, and he wanted to kill me afterwards. Like he was upset that this youngster <laughs> beat him up. Yes. And um, he said he wanted to kill me, so I was scared. And Father Greg Boyle, uh -huh. our priest, he yeah. Catholic, he came to our house to talk. Mm -hmm. And um, my mom said, "No, I can't, I can't have this crazy ass dude starting fights with everybody in the neighborhood." Mm -hmm. People would come and look for me in my house, like because they knew I lived there. Yeah. They would actually knock. Excuse me, is Felipe home? Can you come outside, please? Oh no! And they will fight in the yard. What with your with your mom watching? Yeah. What would she do? Would she freak out? Yeah. She, or she would be like, "You better not lose." No, she would just not. She just close the door. Yeah. Yeah, and then like I'll go back in the house. So that went on for a long time, but this guy wanted to kill me, so it was different. So I couldn't go home. Uh -huh. I didn't want to go home, and then um, Father Greg Boyle put me in rehab. And I was there like for a, for about a year. Mm -hmm. I was like the youngest guy there. Everybody was going in there for like heroin and heroin. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I was like the, the only guy there was for like cocaine. Yeah. I guess not that many crackheads were were starting to quit at twenty. Yeah. But I did. And when I was in there, um, we had a counselor who was the um, a, like, I thought he was a priest, but he's not a priest. He's like a brother. Mm -hmm. I guess there's like priest, father, mother, nun, and then there's brothers. Okay. Kind of like the kind of like uh, like Nacho Libre, Nacho. Yes. He's a brother. Yes. For the yes. he does like the dirty work for the priest. Uh huh. Because usually when um like if you're a, a a family with means, you know, money, the priest would actually go to your house and talk. But like Father Greg, 
came to our house. We didn't have any means, but he knew who I was. Right. So um, Tom, I think his name was Tom. He would go um, talk to us, to all the men, and one day he wrote them. Um, write down your five dreams. Okay. The things you want to do in your life. So we were, all the men, they were like 40, mm -hmm. 50. This old guy was 60. He had just come out of prison for doing um, 25 years. We started writing stuff like, um, I have this dream where I'm naked in class. I have this dream where I have money. When I wake up, I don't have it no more. Uh -huh. And the lady said, no, 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 no. You got to have it all wrong. <laughs> Not actual dreams. Or like goals. Your goals. Ambitions. What did you want to be in life? <laughs> yes. So we started writing stuff down, but I didn't get to see too much about what the other people wrote. Yeah. But I saw what the 60-year-old guy wrote and like a fireman. 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 At 60. Yeah, but that's what he wanted to be, I guess. Yeah. And instead, he ended up being an arsonist. <laughs> I guess, you a know. Little different. But um, I wrote down, I want to be a comedian. Uh -huh. So I wrote down comedian one, two, I like Olive. I, I, want, I want to go to, I eat Olive Garden all the time. I loved it. So I want to go to Italy one day and do the real <laughs> tour of Italy, not on a plate. <laughs> and then... The third one was to be happy, and four and five, I didn't I didn't write anything down. So I wrote comedian. Uh -huh. So when I came out of rehab, I didn't know, like, there was not really a lot of social media. Mm -hmm. It was like 94, 95. So, yeah. And I didn't even know. I didn't graduate high school, so I didn't know anything. I must have went to computer lab three times. Right. I met a robot, that's it. I find another robot. I remember <laughs> I wrote code when I was in junior high. That's they, pretty They impressive. taught us. Yeah, but you know, I I got tr I got kicked out. I think I was think I was uh, I went back to my old school, uh -huh. and the only the only had a computer there was a teacher, so there was no computer lab in my school. So yeah, okay. I, so um, I went to a library, the the Angeles County Library on Fifth and Grand. Mm -hmm. And this lady, um, this librarian lady, came up to me, and I just told her, "Listen, man, I want to be a comedian. Okay. I don't know how, I don't know when, yeah. but I got to learn how to write jokes." Yeah. So you got anything here on comedy writing? And she took me like to the second floor and there was this whole aisle of comedy writing by like the old dudes like Steve Allen and he used to write for the Tonight Show. Then I saw this book that said um, um, comedy writing step by step by um, Jean, Jean Pere, some French yeah. name. So I, got, I rented it and I checked it out. Yeah. And that's the, the book I used, it's How to Write Jokes. And how to how to write jokes step by step. I didn't know there was such a thing. Yeah, I didn't know either. Yeah, you gotta go to a librarian and talk to them. <laughs> so I got the book and I kept it. I never took it back. Oh. <laughs> and um, I felt bad about that, but I ended up um, later on donating books to other people. Um, but um, I learned the book, and then I, I saw that um, I went to the I saw a free magazine at the library called Alley Weekly. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure you have it here. It's called Denver Weekly. Everybody has one. Yeah, yeah. And it has the all the concerts, all the clubs, all the restaurants. And I saw open mic. And I went to this open mic in, um, on a fountain. It was called the Natural Fudge. And there was a lot of young comedians there, like Alonzo Bowden, um, Jamie Kennedy was there. I think he was living in his car. Uh -huh. And I, be I became friends with those guys the first day. We hit it off because we were young. Yeah. But... You should have seen me. The way I was dressed, I was dressed like Fozzie Bear. Fozzie Bear? <laughs> From the Muppets? Yes. Because I thought just that, wear like a hat and a scarf or a tie? Yeah, because I thought that that's how comedians dress. Because uh -huh. the, the, only, the only comedians I knew were like um, Mike, Mike, uh, Mike Pitta, you know, uh -huh. from the San Francisco. He's an old comic. And he just he would dress like those shirts, mm -hmm. you no know, shirt, jeans, shoes, and then like the little cuff right here whatever it was uh -huh. elbow yeah yeah so i didn't know so i, I got this coat i found and it was checkerboard <laughs> and then I, I, I put on my jeans like they do and i took in my shirt i couldn't find a tie and then my friends here use this i didn't know what that was and then my friend, it was a bolo oh no <laughs> I, I mean at least i look funny <laughs> right so i went over there with my jokes i had i was nervous and um I just started making fun of people in the audience, and I got a laugh, two laughs, <laughs> yeah. three laughs. The owner there uh, was named um, his, uh, was um, um, John Roberts. His wife was Barbara Roberts. Yeah. And he had a he had a sh he told me, "Hey, you're a very funny guy. Come back next week. We're gonna be taping taping a TV comedy show here." 
uh-huh. come on down. You're going to be on TV. And I was like, what? <laughs> I thought that I made it. Like, what? Right, of course. I, I came here on a bus. <laughs> I got a TV show. But I didn't, I didn't know what, what he was talking about because I didn't have cable. I don't know what it was. I, uh-huh. I knew what cable was. I knew right. what HBO was. Uh-huh. But I didn't know what local access was. Mm-hmm. The local TV <laughs> station. <laughs> So we get there. I'm dressed up better, you know. I got, I got a no bolo, right? Real same time. coat, you know, and I'm short hair, no beard. I have no hair, by the way. I had no hair. I was bald. You were bald. Yeah, like the like the thugs, the cholos. Oh yeah, because now you have bald. luxurious locks. Yeah, my hair was bald, so I was more looking more like um, Uncle Fester <laughs> when I was performing. So I, had, I did my first joke. I said, um. My dad would walk around the neighborhood and bring furniture and bring it home and fix it like my guy over with duct tape. Uh-huh. One time he brought a television home. I said, wow, that TV got 500 channels. When I got older, it didn't have 500 channels. It was a knob from the oven. Oh, no way. <laughs> my favorite channel was 300 degrees. <laughs> Which was a Dukes that had it on Channel Broil. So that joke was the funniest joke I ever had back then. Uh-huh. And that joke alone helped me like get work. Yeah. With other people, and I used that one joke as a staple of my comedy, mm-hmm. and I built around that joke thanks to the book. After from that joke, I wrote other stuff about poverty. I said, um, one time the burglars broke into our house and they couldn't find nothing to steal, so they woke up all, they woke us all up, and started making fun of us. <laughs> Man, you guys don't have nothing. <laughs> the police showed up; they made fun of us too. They looked at each other and said, "Wow, look around, man, poor family." Oh. They took everything. <laughs> they even made a hole in the couch. <laughs> I said, yeah, officer, they took everything. They even got my sister pregnant. <laughs> so that, so I built on that, and that was my, 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 the jokes that got me. 